Hello and welcome. Today we're going to work on intermediate accounting. We're working on the classified balance sheet. So the more sophisticated balance sheet rather than just the simple uh, balance sheet that you may have seen in financial accounting. Hello, my name is Jeff and I help you finally learn financial literacy. So accounting and finance and Excel. So let's get started with the balance sheet. Now, as you know, the balance sheet is sometimes called the statement of financial position and it is assets have to equal liabilities plus equity remember that's the the accounting equation so how useful is the balance sheet or what is it used for well things like liquidity it helps to determine a company's liquidity or how near it is to cash it helps on solvency solvency is the ability for a company to pay its debts when it's due so you can see how much assets they have, how much cash, or how near they are to cash, and then when the liabilities are due. Also, it has some idea with the financial flexibility of a company, uh, that, and that's the ability to alter the amount and timing of cash flows. Can you speed up the cash flows? Can you delay cash payments? And so on. So let's talk about the limitations of the balance sheet, and uh, this is... Uh, just to be fair, you have to understand uh, what it does not show. The balance sheet does not show uh, fair value for some accounts, like land. Land is shown at historical cost because we can't find an objective number, an objective way to value that land. Um, there are subjective ways we can do a, an estimate or an appraisal, uh, but that is, that two different professionals could come up with two different numbers so it's not an objective number also you know accounting this is true in accounting but but especially on the balance sheet it requires an extensive use of judgments and estimates now that's required by gap but but that is what happens estimates are only as good as the inputs or the ideas behind it or the judgments so you have to put that into your consideration when you're looking at a company's balance sheet the last thing on the limitation of the balance sheet is it fails to include some items that have value, uh, financial value, that we cannot value objectively. For example, like the company's supply chain or reputation or management experience or employees. All this are, are really not financial numbers we can put, but that is a limitation. We, we can't value all the positive things about the company. So let's look at the balance sheet classifications, assets, liabilities, and equity. Assets has five different classifications, and you may not see all five all the time. Depends on how sophisticated the company is. We have current assets. That always goes first, and always the first one is cash. So investments, um, sometimes they're called long-term investments. Property, plant, and equipment, sometimes those are called plant assets or fixed assets. Intangible assets, and then a category where we don't have a clear option, we put it in other. So let's talk about each one of these individually. So current assets. These are assets that a company would convert to cash, or they may already be cash. They're going to sell them or consume them within one year, or the operating cycle, whichever is longer. Always put cash first, cash and cash equivalents. Cash equivalents is the idea maybe of three months of a security, maybe a, uh, a certificate of deposit, maybe that, that matures in 30 days or 90 days. That's cash equivalents. It's so close to cash, we put it in the cash account. Cash, the official designation for cash is cash and cash equivalents. The next one is marketable securities. Sometimes these are called short-term investments. So these are investments that we have and we intend to sell them at any time. And so we, we think we're not going to hold them for the long term, which would be an investments or long-term investments category. Then receivables like accounts receivable, notes receivable, inventory, and then prepaid expenses. These are items that are current assets. Investments. These are long-term investments. And so you kind of have four different types here. You could have securities, just plain securities such as stocks, bonds, mutual funds, index uh, funds, 
exchange traded funds, long-term notes, on and on and on. It could be the second category that it's a tangible fixed asset that's not currently used in operations. So land, let's think about land. Is land a property, plant, and equipment or a fixed asset or a plant asset? Yes. But if it's not used in operations, then it really looks more like an investment. Let's say we, we have purchased land in another state just for investment purposes. Well, that's an investment. If we buy land where we have um, our building, then, then that is a long-term asset that is property, plant, and equipment. Okay, so a little bit of distinction. It depends on the intended use. You could set aside investments in special funds like a sinking fund to pay off a bond issue in 20 years. Could be a pension fund, plan expansion, or whatever. Uh, that is a special fund. That's a long-term investment. The last category is not as common, but it could be a non-consolidated subsidiary that we have some investments in. So that is an investment, a long-term investment of the fourth type. All right, let's look at property, plant, and equipment. These are also called plant assets. These are also called fixed assets. So lots of things go in this category. They're long-term assets. They have a physical characteristic, land, building, equipment, machinery, furniture. Land improvements would be things like if we own land, we add fence, we add um, parking lots. So that's land improvement. All of these assets are depreciated except for land. So these are the long-term assets we use to run our business. The next category would be intangible assets. These are legal rights. They don't have a physical characteristic. So things like a patent, copyright, franchise, a goodwill, trademark, trade name, all these are assets that have uh, legal rights that are intangible. Other assets, just to give you, hey, there's a, a fourth, uh, fifth category, I guess. Uh, the other assets, so things that don't clearly fall in other categories. So if you have non-current receivables, then that would be in the other category, prepaid pension costs, deferred income taxes, advances to subsidiaries. All these would be other assets, but there's not a clear place for them. So in a more complex company, you'll probably see some other assets. All right, let's switch to liabilities. We have two, current liabilities and long-term liabilities. Current liabilities are debts that are due within one year or the operating cycle, whichever is more. So if you have operating cycle of 15 months, you expect to, to start and run your business and then finally sell it and collect cash, it takes you 15 months, then all that in 15 months is a current liability. Things like accounts payable, wages payable, salary payable, a note that's one year or less, or income tax payable, all these are current liabilities. Now long-term liabilities are one year uh, more than one year. One year exactly would be current. So more than one year or the normal operating cycle, whichever is longer. Now, if you have a long-term liability like bonds payable, it's 30 years and it's 29 years and then finally it gets to be, it's due less than one year. Well, that bonds payable that for 29 years has been a long-term liability, then that last year it becomes a current liability. So are bonds payable ever a, a current liability? Yes, in the very last year. So bonds payable, mortgage payable, notes payable, more than one year would be a long-term liability. And then pension obligations is another example of a long-term liability. All right, let's look at equity. Equity, you're really gonna see always the first two. You may not see accumulated other comprehensive income, three, four, or five. So let's. Let's talk about this. You always have capital stock. Capital stock would be common stock and preferred stock. It also include additional paid in capital, uh, which sometimes is abbreviated APIC or APIC. Capital stock, and then you have retained earnings, and then you have accumulated other comprehensive income. 
any treasury stock that the company buys and takes off the market, the company buys its own stock, it becomes treasury stock. So less any treasury shares. And then there's non-controlling interest. If you own a subsidiary but somebody owns 10%, then that's a non-controlling interest. Okay, now we're looking at Excel. We have a problem. And let's say we have the following information. We have all these accounts. And how can we make a balance sheet? So I'm going to show you this. Um, we have some check figures. We have some numbers here. Let me show you how to do what the balance sheet should look like. So here's our balance sheet. We're going to list cash is a current asset. We always list that one first. So we have assets on the left side. We have liabilities here on the right side. And then the bottom right hand corner is stockholders equity. So let's see what we know. We have cash and we have marketable securities available for sale. We have accounts receivable. Now on accounts receivable we need to reduce it and we have less allowance for doubtful accounts. So we have 30,000 people owe us. We think 6,000 will not be collected so the asset is 24,000. We have notes receivable of 18,000, inventory of 40,000, and prepaid rent of 6,000. So our current, uh, sorry, current assets are 133,000. So that's the first section of the assets. Then we have investments. So here is where we talk about land investment in preferred stocks. So that we own preferred stocks of another company, 9,000. And then land that we've purchased as an investment, it's not uh, a productive asset for our company, that's 41,000. We could sell it any time. We're not using it in the operations of our, our business. Normally land would be under property, plant, and equipment, but the property, plant, and equipment we have only is equipment less accumulated depreciation. So that's 24,000 minus seven is 17. We have one intangible asset, copyright. So we add up this column, the 133 plus the 50 plus the 17 plus the 8 is going to be $208,000. Now our, our balance sheet has to balance. So our current liabilities, let's look at all the current liabilities. Our current liabilities would be 76,000. So our notes payable is 12,000 plus 50,000 accounts payable. Income taxes payable is 2000 Unearned service revenue, remember that's a liability because we, uh, an unearned revenue is a liability. So our total current liabilities are 76000 We have one long-term liability, which is 60000 So our total liabilities are the 76 plus the 60000 136000 Our stockholder's equity is made up of common stock additional paid in capital and retained earnings and here we have accumulated other comprehensive income. Now what would accumulated other comprehensive income be? It would be something like we have investments and we have an unearned gain, unrealized, I'm sorry, unrealized gain of 5000 and so we increase our stockholders equity because our investment goes up. So if we had an investment that went up Say our preferred stock went up 5,000. Maybe we purchased it at uh, 4,000. It went up by 5,000. And so we show that at fair value, the preferred stock at fair value, and then stockholders' equity has to go up. So let's check. We have the total liabilities in stockholders' equity is 208,000, and our total assets are 208,000 also. So what we have is this is a classified balance sheet and we have the classification of assets and liabilities. Assets are current assets, investments, property, plant, and equipment, and intangible assets. Under liabilities, we have current and long term. All right, thanks for watching.